Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video we're doing a witchcraft item haul of all of the witchcraft and pagan items that I got from my most recent trip to Glastonbury. <music> Now for those of you who've been here for a while, you will know that I absolutely love Glastonbury. The town, not so much the festival, mainly because it is largely witchcraft and pagan stores. It is amazing. I love it there so, so much. And I haven't been since 2019, and typically I try to go every single year to enjoy the environment and to help support the small businesses that are there that are part of the witchcraft and pagan communities. So for my birthday this year, we decided to go down for just a really short break. And so these are the items that I got from that really short stay in Glastonbury. Now, if you would like to see a little bit of Glastonbury for yourself, I did film some of my days when I was there. The vlog was my last video, but I will it up here if you would like to check out some of the shops and the atmosphere for yourself. Now before we do get started, I do want to say that you definitely don't need to have this many witchcraft books, you don't need to have this many witchcraft items. I really enjoy supporting the small businesses within the witchcraft and pagan community, and my job is also within the world of witchcraft. I teach witchcraft both online and at events, and so I do have quite a large and ever-growing collection of unusual witchcraft books. You don't need items to practice witchcraft unless you want them, you don't need a humongous collection of books unless you really want to. These are just the things that I buy once a year when I go to Glastonbury. I essentially condense all of my yearly witchcraft shopping into three days when I go to Glastonbury because I really like supporting the small in-person businesses because if we don't support them, they're not going to be around anymore. So that is why there is so much stuff. I promise that when I go shopping, there usually isn't this much stuff. This is just like a once a year thing. So as always, I will leave links to the shops down in the description box and any products that I'm showing, if it has a particular name, I will also mention what the product is, the book, the author, those kind of things, so that you can then find them. It's kind of difficult to find an item if you have no idea where it's from or what it's called. So I will put that all down in the description box. So anyway, with that all being said, let's start with going through some of the items that I got. And I'll be honest, most of them are books, <laughs> which is that really much of a surprise? If you know me, I don't think it's that much of a surprise. <laughs> So we're starting with a bookshop. The first one that we get to is Labyrinth Books. Now Labyrinth Books is partway up the high street. It's actually the first bookshop that you come to from the top of the high street. Now it's a really, really beautiful shop. It's really small, probably the smallest in the town that I know of. And I didn't spend too much money in there. I got two books and they both look really, really interesting. So the first book is Operative Witchcraft. Now I saw this and I looked at it and I put it down and then I picked it up again and then I read the back and I was like, damn, this sounds really cool. And then I bought it, you know, how it typically goes. The blurb is massive, by the way, but I will give you a really basic rundown. It is essentially a look at British magic from the medieval period all the way up to the decriminalization of witchcraft in the 1950s. Primarily, it focuses on the medieval to the Edwardian period, looking at different types of magical practice within the British Isles and who practiced it. It sounds really, really interesting, and it's not just words either. There's also pictures and photographs inside, which really help you to visualize the kind of practice that was done. Things like these, which I think are really cool because oftentimes, especially when it comes to older magical practices, it can be a little bit difficult to visualize what that would have looked like. And they actually include photographs of items that they have found, which just makes this so, so cool. So I'm very excited to read this one. And then I got myself Honoring Your Ancestors, which I know is a really popular book. I was going to get this on its release. I think it was going to release October last year and I ended up not getting it. I'm not really sure why. I think I must have got distracted by Halloween decorations, but I ended up not getting it. So when I saw this, I was immediately invested in it. It's essentially talking about how to honour your ancestors, how to create communication with them, how to appreciate them, including setting up altars for ancestors, and a lot of the things that you really question me about. So this one could be really useful for anyone who does want to work with their ancestors and try to connect with them. I am going to give it a read. I have heard so many good reviews about it though, so it could be worth checking this one out. I am really looking forward to reading this. I am adding it to my giant stack of to-read books which is gonna take me a really long time to get through. 
So moving down the high street, we ended up in Sons of Asgard. Now Sons of Asgard is a really, really beautiful shop. They're actually relocating onto the high street, which I'm so excited for. If you wanna see videos of any of these shops, the vlog will be linked up here so that you can check it out if you would like to. And in there, I just had to get a few things. I spent like two hours talking to the owners and they are genuinely such lovely people. So in there, I did get just a few things. I got some chamomile, Roman chamomile specifically. And then I also got some broom tops, which I am really excited about using within my practice. I just, I love chamomile and I like broom tops and I can never find them anywhere. And so when I saw them, I was like, oh, I need them. So I ended up getting them. And then the day after, just before we came home, I actually went back in again and I got two loose incenses. So I got Keridwen and I got Keronos and I have not burned either of these yet. I am kind of waiting for the perfect moment to burn them, but I love the smell of these. I am so excited about giving them a go. I just, you guys know I love loose incense. And so really looking forward to these. I always use my Bridget incense all the time. I also have a Glastonbury incense and I love those. They were from Star Child, but this time I decided to try the Sons of Asgard loose incense because I hadn't tried it before. So I got these and I'm so excited about them. Back into a bookshop, <laughs> let's go into the Speaking Tree. Now the Speaking Tree is a really, really cool shop. It is two stories of just books, but the downstairs is really where you want to be for the witchcraft and pagan and occult books. That's really where it all is. Also bonus if you are really tall because the books are literally stacked like really, really high in the shelves and I am a short bean so I couldn't really reach that many of them but the ones I could reach are really really cool we did get quite a few books um yeah I might have got a little carried away but all of them look really really cool and so I'm so excited to start reading them now where do they start and where do they end I think this is it so the first one is Scottish Witchcraft. Now, a lot of you that were in the live stream will likely remember that I mentioned this book in the live stream and wanted to learn a little bit more. I primarily focus on kind of Welsh magic and British folk magic. So I really wanted to learn a little bit further afield. You know, I wanted to go further north and I'd heard really good things about this one. And it is essentially a look at the magical folk traditions of Scotland. Is essentially what this is and I saw it and I was like damn I need to get that that is such a coincidence I was talking about that just the other day so I ended up getting it next up is the book of grimoires now this one really fascinated me I've always been interested in medieval grimoires and usually they're mistranslated and so there comes this book. This book is written by a gentleman who has quite a large collection of medieval and other era grimoires, oftentimes books that have been mistranslated in the past. And essentially, this is a collection of information from previously mistranslated grimoires. And as with the other books, it does come with the uh, illustrations, which I can always appreciate because I feel like I have like the psyche of an eight year old and I really like books with pictures. But this one seems really interesting. It goes into a lot of really unusual magical practice that maybe isn't touched on so much anymore because a lot of the writings and a lot of the information has been lost. So this is definitely more of a focus on it, I need to pay attention kind of a book. It definitely isn't like a chill, sit down, not really pay attention, nighttime read. You know, this is like a, I really need to focus on it textbook. But when I do have chance to actually focus on it, I think this is gonna be really, really interesting. Next, we have Walking With Trees. Now, a lot of you are really interested in Oem. Now, I love working with Oem. I've worked with them now for about eight, seven, eight years, something like that. And I've always loved working with trees. And so a lot of you really wanted more information. I ended up getting this book. This is Walking With Trees. And essentially it is a touch on the 13 native trees of Britain and Europe, looking into their mythologies, healing practices, history, as well as magical practice. And it also goes through the Oem as part of the Celtic tree alphabet. It seems really, really cool. And bonus, it has pictures. <laughs> Can you see a pattern? developing here. I think I can. So I got this one. I'm really excited to read it. It's not solely focused on Oem, but it does have a lot of interesting information about Celtic tree magic. And I have a few books already on Celtic tree magic. So hopefully this one is another one that I could recommend to you all in the future. I am going to have to do a full video on Celtic tree magic, I think, because a lot of you seem really interested in it. So let me know if you would like me to 
do a video on that. And then the last one from The Speaking Tree is Of Blood and Bones. Now this is a really interesting book, it touches on shadow magic and magic of the dark moon, essentially more negative magical practice. And I really enjoy negative magical practice. That is not me saying that I like hurting people, but I do think that in some cases it can be very useful to undertake if necessary. But even if you don't choose to practice it yourself, it can be really, really interesting to learn so that you can understand how to counter it. So I really like books that do focus on more negative magical intentions, because even if you don't choose to practice it, can be really interesting to just learn about it. And there's not that many books on the market that do cover darker magical practices. So when I saw this, I saw this on the first afternoon we were there, we went into the shop and I was like, I'm not buying anything today. And I didn't, I didn't. However, I looked at it and went, I need that tomorrow. So I, I went back and I got it because I wasn't gonna miss the chance of getting this book in the bookshop. So this one, I'm really, really excited to read. Like the rest of them I'm excited to read, but this one I'm like really, really excited to read because it looks really, really cool. Oh, you can see my filming light. <laughs> that is my ring light just reflecting in the cover of the book. So the next shop is Starchild. Now Starchild is a shop that I used to go into a lot. I don't really go into it as much anymore. However, I do really like their candles. So I ended up getting two of their candles. Now typically a lot of you will have noticed when I do my spell videos, if I do use candles, I often use my own candles because obviously we make candles and we sell them and I really like the candles that we make Therefore, I use them. However, these really, really big candles we don't do because they're just massive. And so I ended up getting two while I was there. So I ended up getting the Cancer Astrology candle because I'm a Cancer Sun. And then I also got their Peace candle because now that I have my apothecary table all set up as an altar, these are often burned on that altar when I don't have it set up for a Sabbath or a special occasion. So oftentimes, if I'm doing any kind of personal work, Workings, I will often use the cancer candle and if I am just burning candles generally I will use the white peace candles and I have one of their giant candle holders that I use for these and I just really really like just having candles burning of an evening when I am reading books so I got these while I was there because I like supporting the in-person shops as well as online so I got these. So we then might have gone into another bookshop. And by might, I mean we definitely did. At the bottom of the high street is Courtyard Books. Now Courtyard Books is my favorite bookshop in the entire town. They mainly focus on more unusual books and also secondhand books. And so I often get a lot of the more unusual books in there. This is where in the past I have got my High Magic's Aid book from, the book that was originally written as a fantasy novel by Gerald Gardner to incorporate aspects of the magical practice into the work as a way of almost second-handedly teaching people about the magical arts. And I got my favouritest copy of that book from in there and I was so tempted to get others. We saw a few limited edition books that I really, really wanted to get that were really expensive and I ended up not getting, which is probably a blessing for my bank account. Though there was one Gemma Gary book that was like really, really interesting and I really wanted to get it, but I ended up not getting it. So if it's still there next time, I might end up getting it, but it probably won't be there next time. Anyway, I did get a lot of other books while I was in there over the course of a few days. Now, some of these you've already seen. Some of these are definitely going to be new to the people who watch the vlog because I might have gone back in a second day and I might have bought even more books and by might I mean I actually a hundred percent did. Yeah, I might have cleared out their traditional witchcraft shelf just a little bit, just just a little. <laughs> Whoops. So the first book is Under the Witching Tree and then I also got under the Bramble Arch. Now this is book one and this is book two, I think. Yes, this is book one, this is book two. There is also a third that I don't think I currently have, but I had to get both of them because they both seem really interesting and they both focus on traditional witchcraft, which you all know is probably my favorite form of magical practice. <laughs> So Under the Witching Tree primarily focuses on plants and their magical and medicinal properties within folk magic and folk healing. So it goes into loads of different photographs of the plants and different ways that they are used. It goes into the holly tree and the yew tree and apples and rowan and hazel. And there's also pretty pictures because I am predictable. <laughs> and it's just really interesting to learn from a folk herbalist about magical and medicinal uses for plants. So I got this one and then I got Under the Bramble Arch because um, 
I couldn't help myself, they seem so interesting. This one primarily focuses on plants and magical practices of liminal places, the in-betweens, the moments before dusk and dawn, the bits between tide and sea of meadow and forest, the liminal places that are often very prone to fairy and spirit and shade encounters. And so as soon as I saw that, I was like, damn, I really, really need to get this. And it also covers things like mistletoe and broom and dock leaves and all of the things that you know I really, really like learning about. So I ended up getting this one as well. And the moment I figure out which one the third one is, I will probably end up getting that one as well. If I can find it in Courtyard Books, I will 100% get it because that just seems so cool. And if there's three of them, I have to get all three, right? This is justification for me, yes? Yes, if I have one and I have two, I should also get three. That just seems like the natural order of things. Then I ended up with this one. This is a really, really cool book. This is the hardback version of it. They did have the standard version, but I was like, but it's so pretty. So I ended up getting the hardback version because obviously I spent all of 30 seconds rationalizing that to myself. And this one is called Between the Realms, Cornish Myth and Magic. And this one just really fascinated me. It goes into a lot of information about the Cornish Otherworld and fairy legends, Cornish sites, Cornish magic. And I just, I had to, oh yes. And there is also um, pictures because I am definitely predictable at this point. Now there's lots of reasons why I ended up getting this, but also, especially when it comes to England and the British Isles, folk magic varies so dramatically from county to county. So if you go to North Wales, the folk magic practices are so different to what they are in Cornwall, which is different to what it's like in Somerset, which is different to what it's like in Essex. There are so many different practices across the country, so every time I find a book on a different kind of folk magic, I just, I have to. I just have to. <laughs> that is my rationalization for it. I just need to know. And then I got just a, just a few more that I um I might have gone in and got the second day because I could not resist. Now the first one I got is the Nocturnicon. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I'm going to assume it's based on the Necronomicon. Now this was a book that was recommended to me in the last live stream and it seems really interesting. I have already started reading it. I'm not sure where I got up to. I don't think I got that far. We were in the car and I'm pretty certain that I fell asleep because it's a moving vehicle. I think we can all appreciate the fact that the moment you get into a moving vehicle a lot of people can't help but fall asleep. And it's basically an introduction and a look at using ceremonial magic as well as chaos magic and necromancy in order to tap into more negative, baneful magic in a way for achieving your goals. And a lot of you know, I am not afraid of learning a little bit more about darker magic. And so this one seemed really interesting to me. So I did get this. This is obviously a secondhand copy. It is quite old and yellow and battered, which you know I'm fine with. Like as far as I'm concerned, an old book is as good as a new book. And sometimes it's actually better than a new book in some cases. So I got this one and so far from what I've read, I really like it. I'll have to give you updates on the books that I like and the books that I don't, but so far this one seems really cool. And once again, you don't often find that many books written about negative magic. And so I ended up just having to get that. And also kind of cool coincidence, we were talking about that book on the live stream. And then a few days later, I find it in a bookshop and I've never seen this one in that bookshop ever before. So that was very, very cool. The next one is The Devil's Plantation. Now you can't really see, the contrast on this is, it's not great. Um, you kind of can't see what it says from a distance, but this is the, the Devil's Plantation, even if you can't really see it that well. Now, this is by Nigel G. Pearson. Pearson? Not really sure. Terrible with names. Pretty certain I have other books by this author that I really, really enjoy. So I decided to give this one a go. And also the minute I see this illustration, this to me immediately screams The Black Toad, which is a book about traditional witchcraft. And so therefore, I had to buy it. Obviously, this is how this works. <laughs> so this one is all about traditional witchcraft in East Anglia. So it's a different location, therefore I had to buy it. This is how this works on traditional witchcraft. The moment I find a book on a slightly different region, I have to buy it. And it's essentially a look at the good folk, fairies, and magical practices of the liminal places in East Anglia. And it also has pictures. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this one. I, from what I remember, really like other books by the same author. Therefore, I'm gonna assume that I will like this one as well because I am 
predictable like that and I'm slowly just collecting every piece of work that this author has ever done. It's gonna happen one day, I will literally have like a library just dedicated to all of the works of set authors. <laughs> There's a few, like Gemma Gary, Nigel G. Pearson, Pearson, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I will eventually just end up with like whole libraries of books just, just by these people. And then there's another, I went a little bananas in there. This is Liber Sigillum. Sigillum? Sigillum. I just said it the same way three times. <laughs> it is this book anyway. It is called Liber Sigillum of the Lords Who Wander. And I actually don't really remember why I got this. And then I looked at the blurb and I was like, okay, no, I definitely remember why I got this. It is essentially a practical guide of the art of talismanic magic. It goes through the knowledge and skills needed to incorporate the creation empowerment of planetary elemental and angelic talismans into your work. As a battery of power, it is using ceremonial magic to charge and create talismans. And therefore, I had to get it because I really like talismanic magic and so I wanted to see what this book was like. So I got this one and it's not that big. It's really, really small. So I could probably read this in a night, which is really good because I often get really bored of books really quickly. So hopefully this will be good. And if it is, then this could be a potentially good book for any of you out there who are interested in talismanic magic, specifically those that focus in ceremonial magic practices. Because obviously that isn't everyone's cup of tea, but if it is your cup of tea, this could be kind of useful. Now, I promise we are getting down to the last two books that, that I got. Both of these were really interesting. Now, this one has a bookmark in it because I've already read part way. This is the book of Practical Candle Magic Rituals. Now, I didn't realize this at the time, but this was actually published solely for the Spirit and Destiny magazine. Now, the Spirit and Destiny magazine is still in print today. And it's a really interesting magazine. I have got a few copies of it. I don't really buy that many copies, but this book was created in 1981. So it should really tell you how long the Spirit and Destiny magazine has been going on for. And I don't think you can even get this book anymore. This is obviously a secondhand book. It's very bent and, and warped and battered. But a lot of you are really interested in candle magic. I really love candle magic. And so I decided to pick it up. It also was only four pounds. And so I had to get it. So I've already started reading it, as you can see. And so far, I really like it. It's obviously quite simplistic because it goes into like really basic practices like candle colors and those kind of things. But it could be really useful if you can find a copy. Obviously, I'm not really sure how many are out there because it was exclusive to Spirit and Destiny. And this was published in 1981. So I'm not even sure how many copies of this are out there. But it does seem really interesting if you can get hold of a copy. And then the last book that I got is actually the smallest. It is Diddy and it is this one. This is How to Make and Use Magic Mirrors. Now this primarily focuses on kind of ceremonial, alchemical approach to creating magic mirrors. And I have got quite a long way into it. It essentially covers the creation and the use of mirrors using fluid accumulators. Now, fluid accumulators is essentially another term for energy accumulator. Essentially, it includes gold and other elemental properties, which are designed to accumulate a particular form of energy within them. So gold is added into essentially all of them so that it can help raise the energy vibration of any energy that is gathered within it. And then you essentially choose specific elemental components based on herbs and plants and items, which will help to accumulate and gather certain energies within that mirror that can then be used within ritual and ceremonial practice. And it is really interesting. It is super tiny and it's also super old. <laughs> it's kind of all battered and faded and someone definitely sat a mug on it. Can you see that? Someone sat a glass on it once upon a time, but it seems really interesting. I'm not really sure how much of this I would actually include in my magical practice, but that doesn't mean it's not interesting to learn about. So I would love to know if anyone actually has this book. And there's even a sticker on the back that shows one of the last times it was sold and it was apparently sold for £1.50. But this is like a really quite old sticker. So this probably was like, well, 15 years old maybe. So the book itself was actually published. Let's see, when was it published? It was published in 1977. 
So it's quite an old book and it's kind of interesting. So if you are interested in magic mirrors, this one could be really good for you. So at the end of the vlog, I did mention that we'd made our way into Philippa Bowers, who is a sculptor and they have a store in Glastonbury. And I saw a statue and then I was like, no, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's too much. So then I saw the smaller versions of the statue, but none of them were really calling my name. And then I did that thing that we all do where you look at the price difference and you go, wow, that really isn't that much of a price difference. And this one is 10 times bigger than this one. So if I'm paying this much for this little one, paying this much for this big one, isn't that much of a difference? So I ended up getting the big one. <laughs> because of course I did. Now currently she is sitting on my Keridwen altar, but I did bring her out to show you. So I am going, I am going to get her. So this is my newest statue for the altar space. She's absolutely stunning. So she has a silvered moon on her head. She has a little stone on her forehead. She is beautifully sculpted. And I'm not sure if you can see inside there, it's like a geode inside her stomach and she's actually hollow. So what you do is you put a tea light inside and it lights up this crystal geode inside. And I will hopefully be able to insert some footage of her actually lit. She is absolutely gorgeous. This should give you kind of an idea of scale. This is like right next to my face. She's like, she's big, she's big, she's a babe. I love her. She's currently on my Keridwen altar right in the corner and she looks stunning, absolutely beautiful. I am obsessed. She looks gorgeous. I'll see if I can get a better close up of her face so you can see the detail. But like, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. I am obsessed with her and I am so happy that I ended up getting this size because a lot of my other goddesses are a little bit small, especially for larger altar spaces. So. She's so pretty. She's going back on the altar the minute I finish this video because I'm so scared to break her. And hopefully I'll be able to show you what she looks like. All lit and everything. So we ended up in the Wildwood. Now I did mention the Wildwood briefly in the vlog and I said that there was a necklace in there that I really, really loved and I wasn't certain of whether or not I would get it. And I got it. Whoops. I have like zero impulse control as you can tell. So this is the necklace. It is of the chalice well symbol and I love the chalice well. You saw what it looked like in there from the videos and this necklace is beautiful, like actually beautiful. It's on the end of a cord. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy with it. So I might have got this as well. Um, I went a little overboard, okay? I, I went a little bit overboard, but that is because we really do only go down once a year and the past few years have obviously been absolutely out of our control. And so we didn't go because it wasn't right to go and it wasn't the right time to go and it was better to stay home and to stay safe. And so this time, because it was my birthday, I might have gone a little extra overboard because everything became a birthday treat. You know how it goes, like it's like Christmas. In like October, you're like, oh, it's a Christmas treat. <laughs> it's like, it's not, you're just buying something for yourself, but you're just calling it a Christmas treat. That is what I did for my birthday. So yeah, there is that. So those are all the things that I got from Glastonbury this year. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know that there was a lot in here, that there's a lot of stuff, but I hope that it did give a little bit of insight into the kind of things that you can get in Glastonbury. And also, especially with all the books, I hope that it could have given you a little bit of inspiration as to what to read next, what to look into next, the different books that are maybe out there that you might not have heard of before, and all of the names for the books will be in the description box, so that if you are interested in any of these, you will be able to find them for yourself and hopefully expand your own magical knowledge. And of course, I'll be incorporating any of the knowledge that I gained from these books back into the channel so that you guys can get it back again, because my goal is not to hoard knowledge. I don't really see the point in doing that. So any of the books that I do get that are maybe slightly more unusual, I like being able to share with you some of that information so that you can get something out of it as well. Because I know that not everyone is in such a fortunate position as to be able to get witchcraft books, to be able to just go out and buy them without having to worry about what people think or the people that you live with or your community. And not everyone has that ability. And so I know that I'm in quite a privileged position to be able to do that and 
and not worry about what people will say or what the community will say or what my family will say. So I always like trying to do what I can to give that information back to you so that you can then incorporate that into your magical practice as well. So if you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It really means so much to me. If you have read any of these books, please let me know what you think of them. If you've been to Glastonbury, what is your favorite shop in Glastonbury? I would love to know. Or we can just have a chit chat in the comment section. That is all cool too. A massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Your names will be on the end screen in just a moment. Your support really massively helps the channel and just helps me to maintain doing what I do on YouTube. If you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try and best post magical content every single week. And I promise that not all of what I do is related to Glastonbury or blogs or hauls. Most of the time I do educational content. This is just kind of like a, a little bit of a blip in my, <laughs> in my YouTube journey because it was just something that was happening currently. So I hope that you're all staying safe. I hope you have a marvellous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Now you can still see that. I need to move it even further this way. That's even worse. How is that even worse? I don't understand how that is even worse. You st stay. <laughs> this is so stressful. Is that okay? Can you can you still see that? I'm calm. And now I'm gonna go put an umbrella up inside, which is gonna stress some of you out. Big style. This is for my filming light, by the way, for reference. I'm not just sticking a standard umbrella up. It is the um, diffuser for my filming light. So I go from looking like this to looking like this, which is like considerably less harsh. So I just look nuts waving an umbrella around inside. I feel like Mary Poppins. I'm procrastinating because I don't want to have to tidy up and get ready. <laughs> This video is going to be a little bit all over the place and that's mainly because we're renovating the office slash workshop upstairs. So basically the entirety of my house is in absolute chaos right now. At the minute I have like nine stacks of flooring in my filming room. I also have the underlay for the flooring in my living room. The filming light we had to bring downstairs because it was being used to help with the painting. It's just, it's chaos and it's also the FA Cup final tonight which means I have to frantically film in the 90 minutes between 8 o'clock and not 8 o'clock because whether England win or lose it is gonna get real loud <laughs> really really quickly. So we need to do this super duper fast. My entire existence is in absolute chaos. Hopefully though you enjoy this video. I'm wearing trousers that have absolutely no stretch in them and I'm literally being squeezed alive. Like, okay, I need to unbutton something. Something's got to give. Something has to... Oh, I can breathe. Okay. They're fine when I'm standing up. I cannot sit down in them. And yes, for reference, this shirt is meant to only have one sleeve. It's cool. It's fancy. I like it. It's cool, it's schnazzy. Okay, anyway, I'm procrastinating. Let's just start this video. So this, 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 this <laughs> is from one place. This is from a different place. Where, this is from this place, and this is from a different place, and this is from this place, and this is, where did I get this one from? <laughs> I think this is from this place, and this is from this place, and this is from this place? What is this? This is from this place, and this is from this place, and this is from this place. Did I get a lot of books? <laughs> yes, the answer, the answer is yes, I did get a lot of books. Is it too many books? No. <laughs> Can I actually have too many books? I'm not so sure. I don't think I can. Oh, Eve. Jesus Christ, there's so much stuff. Let me put this. So to give you an idea of how many witchcraft books I managed to get in two days, um, this is the pile. <laughs> it's actually quite heavy. It's actually quite heavy. I'm gonna put that down. Um. I might have bought a lot of books. 
Oops. <laughs> I didn't really realise it was this many because obviously like we're going through the shops and every time we go to a shop we take it back to the car so that we're not like carrying around like loads of heavy books. And then I didn't realise until setting up for this video how many books there actually were. Oops. <laughs> so the first, so the first shop that I ended up, so the first shop that, so as we come down the, <laughs> so we're starting with a bookshop. This one is the, so we're starting with a bookshop. <laughs> it's one of them days. <laughs> I just froze. I actually just froze. I was like talking in my head, but I didn't say anything out loud. Let's go candles. I'm gonna have to unwrap these. Let's unwrap these real quick. Yes. Oh, he didn't do it. I thought it was gonna be satisfying. Candles. And this one is called Between the Wet between the whelms, between the whelms, seriously, <laughs> two. <laughs> oh, this piece of hair is driving me insane. What, what, what are you doing? What do you get? get? Oh, the piece of hair is driving me insane. Oh my God, this piece of hair is literally doing my head in. It's still there, it's still there. Let me tip it like this. Oh, I have to cover the titties for YouTube. Cover the titties for YouTube. And then we're gonna pick all of these up. <laughs> this could end very badly, but this is what you gotta do for a thumbnail. This is what you gotta do. You, you gotta risk it all for that, for that juicy thumbnail. What am I saying? I don't even know. Mm -hmm.